In this video, we will talk about variables in programming language. A variable is used to store some data in a program, like we use variables in algebra. Let's define a variable like a equal to 20. Here a is the name of the variable and its value is 20. We also call that variable a is defined. Now let's define another variable as b equal to 5.6. A variable in programming language has an associated data type. Data type means the type of data stored in that variable. For example, in a equal to 20, 20 is an integer. So the data type of a is integer, or we call it simply int. On the other hand, in b equal to 5.6, the value 5.6 is a decimal point number, also known as floating number. So the data type of the variable b is float. In many other programming languages, we need to specify data type while defining the variable. For example, it is done like int a equal to 20 to specify that a is of int data type or float b equal to 5.6 to specify variable b as float data type. But in Python, we do not need this. We simply assign a value to a variable and the interpreter finds and sets its data type by itself. To display the value stored in a variable, we use print function and specify the name of the variable. Print function will print the value stored in that variable. Of course, if I put quotation marks around A, that will become a string rather than the variable of line number 1 and will be printed as A. We can print multiple variables using the comma operator. We also know about the string data type which we studied in last video and use that inside the print function. We can also set a string value to a variable like so. Now to print that, we will simply use the variable name in print function. We can also apply mathematical operations on the numeric data types. We will see more details on mathematical operators in next video. Instead of having single alphabet names for the variables, we can have lengthy names as a1, a2, a3, etc. There are some naming rules we need to follow to set a name of a variable. The rules are listed here. The first character of the variable name must be an alphabet, small a to z or capital A to z, or it can be an underscore. After the first character, we can use alphabets or numbers or underscore. Lastly, the variable names are case sensitive. Small a is different from capital A. So these are examples of valid variable names. And these two are invalid variable names. The first one is starting from a digit and second one is starting from hash character which is not allowed. What if I define a variable with name print? It is a valid name as it satisfied the naming rules. But we know that we have a built-in function named as print. So Python will not generate an error, but the name print is now an int variable and not a function to display the result. So if I will try to use print as print function, Python will generate an error on line number 2 because print is no more a function. Of course we should not do this for print or any other built-in function. Moreover, there are some reserve words or the keywords which are reserved for some specific operations and those cannot be used as variable names. For example, the word while is a reserved word. Since it is used for a specific operation, we will study that later in the course. So if I try to assign a variable name as while, the interpreter will generate syntax error. If you are interested to see all reserved words of Python language, which we cannot use as variable names, a method is given in the lab manual, which you can follow. Now the last point regarding variable names is that the names must be descriptive. By descriptive, I mean that a name must indicate the item or the purpose the variable will be used for. For example, if we want to store the price of an item, then instead of saving that in variable A, we should name the variable as price. Similarly, if we want to store the information of an employee, his name should be stored in variable name. Age must be stored in variable age and salary should be stored in variable salary. This approach gives better readability of the program. 
Now let's talk about a number stored as a number and a number stored as a string. For example, a equal to 5 and b equal to 5 but inside the quotation marks. So if we print both variables, both are printed as 5. But internally, the variable a and b are not same because they have different data types. Variable a is of int data type and variable b is of string data type. Let's try to print a plus 10. a is an int variable and 10 is also a number and hence both should get added. Now instead of a plus 10, let's print b plus 10. Here b is a string variable and 10 is a number and we are getting the error. We know plus operator can be applied between two numbers, int or float and results into addition of those. And plus operator can be applied between two strings resulting into string concatenation. But here we are applying plus operator between a string and a number and it is not defined for that. Read the error message which is self-explanatory. Now in the same print function, if we convert the number 10 to string by placing quotation marks around it, that will make 10 as string and now the plus operator is being applied between two strings. You can see the output as concatenated strings. Now let's see the output of this print function. It generated error because of the same reason as discussed a while ago. But if I change this plus sign to comma, it will resolve the issue. Because the plus operator has different behavior in different cases, but comma operator simply displays the results separated by a space. This 5 plus 10 are both numbers and hence will be added together. And this comma operator will simply display the two things on its right and left side. And we have expected output. Now let's consider this code snippet again, where we store three attributes of an employee in three variables. Suppose I want to display this kind of message for the employee. This is not the programming statement. I just wrote it to show what we want on the output. Likewise, I want to display these messages. But the important thing is that this name and age values and the salary must be picked from these variables rather than typing those in. Let's write the first print statement for the desired output given on line number 4. It should be welcome as string and then for the name Ahmad Hussain, we should not write Ahmad Hussain but we'll write the variable which is name. After the name, we need exclamation mark so I'll put that as string. I have used comma for string concatenation and that will add a space between name and exclamation mark so I should use plus operator rather than comma. Please note that this name is the variable and the value will be picked from this first line. Now let's do it for the message of line number 5. Again this age is variable name and value will be picked from line number 2. And this age is inside quotation marks and hence will be displayed as it is. Now I am writing the print statement for line number 6. I will remove these lines as they are not programming statements. And now we run that code and you can see the expected output. At a later stage, suppose the salary of the employee is raised to 60,000 and suppose age is 26 now, the same print statements will display the updated information. So that's all from this lesson. Thanks for watching.